According to the CDC, there are just under 4 million births each year in the U.S. The semester estimated that your baby will cause you to spend over 14000 in just the first year alone. So we invited Sandra Gordon from babyproductsmom.com to join us today on the Dollar Stretcher interview. Sandra Gordon writes about baby products, health and nutrition for babies. Uh, she's been featured in Parents Magazine, Prevention and Family Circle. She's also appeared on NBC's Today Show and uh, is the author of nine books, including Consumer Reports' Best Baby Products. Uh, Sandra, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, today in our interview, I'd kind of like to focus on the time uh, when mom is expecting that first baby. Uh, the baby hasn't arrived yet and all the glow uh, that comes with it. Uh, what are the absolute essentials that she has to have uh, when the baby comes? Well, there are so many things that mom does need to buy. But I think the main thing, to keep it simple, is to focus on a crib, a car seat, and a stroller. Because those are the things that are big ticket items that you're going to be using for a long time. And I think you should put a lot of your energy in that direction. And then go from there. I have in my book, I Save a Bundle, 50 plus ways to save big on baby gear. I have a whole essentials list that I can actually send to your readers in a link or, or something like that. But I think if you focus on those big ticket items first and then fill in your baby registry after that, it will save you a lot, of, it will save your sanity. And even though you could go ahead and just register online for things, I think it's a really good idea to do your homework. And you want to let other people buy things for you if you're going to be having a baby shower, but I think it's a really good idea to actually go to the store, get your hands on products and try them out so you know what you're doing, you know what these products are. Take the strollers for a spin, take the car seats for uh, a mock installation in your car, and, and really get your hands on these products and, and know what you're talking about. But don't do it all in one weekend, it's too exhausting, there's too many things to focus on. Break it up into chunks, and then if you ultimately register online, you'll have a more of a sense of a control and what you really need. And, and what you can leave with that, live without. Don't Let's register see. for clothes at all. They are the number one baby gift, so you want to let people buy that for you. And make sure that you put really essential things on your list too, like diapers and wipes, because those you will need for years, and that can save you having a big stash of diapers and wipes, can save you a trip to CVS in the middle of the night. Yeah, so, so it's not just about price, uh, it's also about uh, what products uh, best need your particular needs. So, you know, what car seat fits best in your car, for instance. Yes, exactly. Not all car seats are a good fit. Some car seats are big, some cars are small, and that can keep you from using the car seat in the way it's meant to be used and protecting your baby adequately. So you do want to make sure that the products also fit your lifestyle. You don't want to get a big um, stroller, for example, the, a travel system and you end up having to go up and down subway stairs or traveling on buses just because your sister-in-law in the boondocks recommended one thing you know when you get word of mouth kinds of recommendations you really want to put that through your filter and your lifestyle and don't think that you need to be all geared up that you have to have everything from day one because you can save yourself money by buying as you go so as long as you focus on the essentials, then you can figure out, for example, does your baby need a baby Bjorn? After your baby's born, you can spend some time with your baby. If you have one of those babies who likes to be held all the time, yes, then a baby Bjorn might make sense. But you don't necessarily have to be all stocked up from day one, and that can actually save you money down the road. Now, suppose, you know, some of the things, say like a, a car seat or a crib, uh, that you don't get it in a baby shower and you're on a very tight budget, as a lot of young couples are, and that uh, are, are there some ways to, to cut the cost of those items? Yes, you know, you want to buy on sale, but I also encourage people when they register to register for money. And you can use that money to buy at the most opportune time. So you can find a sale. Babies R Us has great sales on car seats, for example. You want to combine a sale. Whenever you're buying anything, you want to combine a sale with a coupon or a coupon code and any other kinds of discounts that you can find. Today, there are so many ways to save. It's all about like strategizing, buying at the right time, and stacking your savings. So if you have the cash, that can actually allow you to do that better than if you're actually registering for an item. Mm -hmm. Now I know here at the Dollar Stretcher, you know, we, we encourage people in so many cases to buy used if, if possible, but I know in, in the world of baby and all the safety issues, that's not always the case. Is there a way to tell, or are there certain items that you can buy used and others that you definitely have to buy new? 
Well, I know that used baby products are very popular these days post-recession. And I really think that new moms especially should take the long view and try to buy new with the key essential items like the car seat and the crib because child safety standards on those products change frequently and it's very hard to tell how old those products are when you buy them. Uh, but you can go ahead and buy used clothing. Uh, clothing down the line after you've gotten all the good stuff that people are going to give you, uh, you Go ahead and buy used when, especially if you're buying like holiday outfits, that can save you a lot of money there. The thing is with uh, used clothing, you want to inspect it to make sure it, it is, either is new or looks like new to you. you. It shouldn't have any loose buttons or appliques. Those things are a potential choking hazard. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of picky about the, the baby products that people start with. And if, if you're going to buy used, at least kind of know where it came from if you can. Like, did it come from your sister-in-law? you know how long she's had it, when she bought it. That can give you an idea of, of how old it is and where it fits into the standards as they're changing. And, and they do change really rapidly. Well, especially in clothes. I mean, you know, uh, typically kids seem to, uh, especially uh, dress your clothes, not the day-to-day the -day play clothes, but, uh, you know, they'll, they'll wear a dress or, or a dress shirt two or three times, and then they've outgrown it. Yes, and, and 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 most shirts can last longer than, than three wearings, even by by a two year old. Yes, it's true. But you know, baby clothes are one of those things where they're very addictive. Some people have a hard time not buying them. So if you're one of those people, you know, going used is good. But I also encourage people to stay away from deal sites because those can be very seductive, and you can end up like spending all the savings that you're working so hard to achieve. Well, I, I know, uh, you know, my, my experience is that uh, a lot of first-time moms, they get so wrapped up in the experience of, uh, of being a first-time mom that uh, uh, everything revolves around baby and they feel like they need to buy just everything that's out there for the, you know. It's the, overwhelming. Yeah, yeah as a first-time parent, honestly, you really don't know what you're doing. You're kind of a marketer's dream. That's why I think it's good to really shop with a list and stick to that list and know that eventually you'll know what that product is for after your baby comes. But don't, but don't think you need to be completely geared up from day one. Now, now is, there, is there any uh, one uh, secret or tip that you think, uh, a piece of advice that's most important for a first-time mom in terms of not, not overspending uh, before the arrival of baby? Well, I think, I'm starting with the basics again, breastfeed as long as you can because breast milk is free and breast is best. But if you're going to use infant formula because you want to or you just need to, I really encourage moms to buy the store brand. By buying the store brand, you can save up to 50%. And infant formula in the U.S. is regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. So all infant formula, whether it's name brand or store brand, must be nutritionally equivalent. And so this is one of those products that doesn't have a lot of play. So there's absolutely no benefit to buying the name brand. You, you buy the store brand and you can save up to 50%. That can save you... Six hundred dollars in the first year. Fantastic, Sandra. We want to thank you for uh, all those wonderful ideas for uh, for our viewers today. Uh, we'll uh, include a link uh, to your site uh, uh, on uh, our YouTube channel as well uh, as uh, on the article uh, on the Dollar Stretcher site. Uh, we want to thank our viewers for joining us today too. Uh, please uh, uh, visit us on all the, the popular social media channels and uh, and as well on the dollarstretcher.com site. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.